Density. Density is the ratio of the mass of something to its volume. So we have an equation here. Density equals mass over volume, or with letters, D equals M over V. Hopefully you've seen that before. Important thing to realize about density, it's a fundamental property of substances. Different substances have different densities, and the density of a substance generally does not change significantly. It does not change, especially when you change the size of an object. If you take a big hunk of wood and you cut it in half, does the mass change? Yeah, half of a log weighs less than a whole log. Does the volume of the log change? Yes, it does. They both change. The density of the log does not change. And that's a concept that, that should have been communicated to you somewhere along the line, but I find most people never really thought about it before. The density of an object does not depend on its size. So a small piece of wood will float in water. A ginormous piece of wood will also float in water because the density of wood is less than the density of water. So it doesn't change. So we calculate the density by taking the mass and dividing by the volume. So simple example, a sample of liquid has a volume of 22.5 milliliters and a mass of 27.2 grams calculate the density. We have to use an equation to do this. We can't do dimensional analysis on this one. So we need to remember that density equals mass divided by volume. That's an equation you should memorize. We'll use it quite a bit. So now in this problem, volume of 22.5 milliliters. They actually use the word volume. So we've got volume equals 22.5 milliliters. If they don't use the word volume, you should be able to look at the unit and know that milliliter is a unit of volume. And then we've got 27.2 grams. That's a 2. 27.2 grams. This is the mass. It actually tells you in the problem, but we also should know that gram is a unit of mass, so that's the mass. So I pulled the numbers out with their units. I labeled them. What are we trying to find? The density. The density. Calculating the density, we, we need to use the density equation. We identified what our variables are, and so we're going to plug them in. Where it says M, I'm going to put in the mass, 27.2 grams. And where the V is, I'm going to plug in the volume, 22.5 milliliters. So do math on the numbers, 27.2 divided by 22.5. Calculator gives me a big old mess. That's 1.2088, eight, repeating forever. Um, what do I do with those units? Do they cancel out? No. There's no simplifying them or anything. You just copy them down. Grams over milliliters. That's a unit of density, grams per milliliter. What else do we have to think about? Significant figures. So here we're doing division. How many sig figs in 27.2? Three. Three. And in 22.5? So how many should we have here? Three. Three. Here we're going to round off right here. That's to the right of the decimal point. It's a small decimal place, so we don't have to go scientific notation or worry about um, changing the value. So we can just go 1.21 grams per milliliter. That is the same as 1.21 grams slash milliliter, by the way. Any questions?
should be fairly straightforward. So when you do a problem where an equation is involved, the solution map shows you how this equation takes you from the given quantity or quantities to the thing you're trying to find. And we just did an example of that. Um, let's do this one real quick. A customer purchases a platinum ring that has a mass of 9.67 grams and displaces 0 0.542 cubic centimeters of water. Is the ring genuine? The density of platinum is 21.4 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of an object is a fundamental property of that material. And so it can actually be used to identify the substance. So we read all the words, and that may or may not be meaningful to you, might be very confusing. But just pull the numbers out and write them down. So 9.67 grams and 0 0.452 cubic centimeters. And then we've got the density of platinum. So I'm going to call that D because it tells me what it is. The density of platinum is 21.4 grams per cubic centimeter. This is written with a slash because it's so much easier to type into the computer. When you copy it down, write it as a vertical fraction so that you recognize it as a fraction. So the question is, is the ring genuine? It's not telling us what to calculate. We kind of have to think about it and figure that out. So we've got a platinum ring, um, a mass of, oh cool, they told us that that was the mass. And we've got this other number. And then it's, is it genuine? And then they're giving us this piece of information. What we need to do, which is not explicitly stated, is we need to calculate the density of the ring and compare it to the density of platinum. If they're the same, then the ring must be made out of platinum. If they're different, we probably got ripped off, which can happen. What is this number? Displaces, what kind of a unit is that, cubic, cent cubic centimeters? It's a unit of volume. So think about a ring. It's a circle, but it's often not completely uniform, right? So do you know an equation to calculate the volume of a ring? I don't. How do you measure the volume of an irregular object? You can see how much water it displaces. And we'll do this in lab. You can take a graduated cylinder. It's got a little marking so you can measure the volume. And you put some water in there, and you measure where the water is, and then you stick the ring in there, and what happens to the level of the water? It goes up. So the level of the water goes up, and this difference in apparent volume of the water equals the volume of the ring. So that's what it means when it says displaces that much. That's the volume. So we've got the volume. So to calculate the density, we'll use the density equation again. Density equals mass over volume. Put in the mass, 9.67 grams. Put in the volume. And then we'll do the math, 9.67 divided by 0.452. blah, blah, blah. The units would be grams over cubic centimeters. How many sig figs should that have? Three. So this comes out to be 21.4 grams per cubic centimeter. That's the density of the ring. What do you think? Is it platinum? Yeah. Yep. This time it came out exactly right. If it was different just a little bit in this uncertain digit, though, we'd still say, yeah, that's probably platinum. 
because there's error in measurements. Any questions? It's calculating density. Density can also be used as a conversion factor. It's, it's a number that relates grams, mass, to volume. It's a conversion factor, though, that only applies to the particular substance. So here's an, another example. Um, a liquid substance with a density of 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. What volume should be measured to deliver a mass of 4 I don't know where 4 came from, 68.4 grams. Well, let's write down the numbers. Uh, 1.32, it's grams slash cubic centimeters, but write that down as a vertical fraction. And the other number they, they're giving us is this. What are these numbers? What do they mean? Well, this one says mass of. Right? So let's label that mass. And, and what's this guy? Density. So that's the density. Now, we could use the density equation and solve it using a little bit of algebra. And if you like using algebra, you can figure it out. So I'm not going to demonstrate that in class. And this is the point of this is using density as a conversion factor. We can use dimensional analysis to avoid algebra in this situation. Are you liking dimensional analysis a little better? Yeah. Anything to avoid algebra, right? So let's, let's approach this from dimensional analysis. We have this number, which has a single unit. We have this number, which has unit per other unit. When you're not sure what number to start your conversion with, start it with the one that just has a single unit. So we're going to start with this mass. That's going to get used as a conversion factor. So we're going to start with 68.4 grams. What are we trying to find? The volume. Does it tell us what unit the volume has to be in? No, it doesn't. What might be convenient given what's down here? Cubic centimeters might be easy, right? So, you know, if they don't tell you what unit you have to use, choose the easiest one. So we've got grams. We're trying to get cubic centimeters. Do we know a relationship between grams and cubic centimeters for this liquid? What's this? This is our conversion factor. The looks on their faces are always interesting. That one was... This is going to be our conversion factor. So 68.4 grams times one arrow, one conversion factor, grams to cubic centimeters, grams here to cubic centimeters here. And then I'm going to put gram down here because I want that unit to cancel out. Exactly the same thing we've been doing. We need something that relates cubic centimeters to grams. That's this density here. As it's written here, though, grams are on top and cubic centimeters are on the bottom. That's OK. We can just tip it upside down. 1.32 goes with gram. So we're going to write 1.32 with gram. And we've got cubic centimeter on top. And if you need a number there, what, what are you going to write? One. So there we go. 68.4 times 1 divided by 1.32 equals 51.81. This is a funny repeating one. 8181, 8181, 8181, 8181. Apparently, 181. What's the units that's left? Centimeters cubed. How many significant figures should we report? Three. 
So this one has three, and that one has three. It ends up being three sig figs a lot. So we're going to keep the five, and the one, and the eight. This is lower than the ones place, so we don't have to worry. So 51.8. The next digit is smaller than five, so we're not going to round up cubic centimeters. And that is the volume of the liquid needed to deliver a mass of 68.4 grams. Any questions? There's a table in your book that gives densities of some common substances oak, charcoal, ice, water. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. That's a, a useful one to remember. It's not a coincidence that the density of water is one. They actually kind of um, worked the other units so that the density of water would be one. The density of ice is 0.92. What do we know by experience? It's ice in my rock star. Ice floats on water. It floats because its density is less. Um, wood has a lower density. Charcoal is, I think, even lower than regular wood, but charcoal, um, 0.57, it'll float on water. Something like lead has a high density. It's not going to float. So you may need to refer to this table when doing um, homework problems. If you need to use density as a conversion factor on an exam, I'll give you the density. It'll either be in a table um, on the first or last page, or it'll be included right in the problem. But sometimes in the homework, they'll ask you a question. You're like, wait a minute, I don't have all the information. Sometimes you have to go looking for stuff like densities or conversion factors. So let's do another one. Um, a drop of acetone, nail polish remover, has a mass of 35 milligrams and a density of 0 0.788 grams per cubic centimeter. What is its volume in cubic centimeters? So let's write down the numbers. We've got 35 milligrams, and we've got 0 0.788 Write that fraction as a vertical fraction. What are we trying to find? The volume. the volume. And it specifies the unit here, right? So we need cubic centimeters. That's the goal, volume in cubic centimeters. We can tell from the title that this is going to be using density as a conversion factor. We approach it as a dimensional analysis problem. Now, you may not be certain what thing should you start with. Well, what did I tell you about looking at the units? Here's milligram, here's grams per cubic centimeter. The single unit, right? Milligrams. That doesn't relate anything. So that's probably going to be your starting point. I'd say probably 99.8% of the time. I just made that number up. But we could do an experiment and figure it out. So we're going to start with this 35 milligrams. We want to get to cubic centimeter. Now we have to think about how are we going to get there. Well, try starting at the beginning. And if you're like, mm, I, I don't know, try starting at the end and working backwards. We've got cubic centimeters. What do we have that relates to cubic centimeters? We've got this guy relating grams in cubic centimeters. We could use this as a conversion factor. If we had grams here, we could get to cubic centimeters. Do you see that? How could we get from milligrams to grams? Can we do that in one step? Yes. Yeah, we can. Thank you for that nice, strong, decisive answer. Here is grams and grams. This one has a prefix. This one does not. One prefix, one step. 
two prefixes, two steps. So this one, thankfully, is one step. So here's our path, milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. So then we start writing our equation and putting the units in it. 35 milligrams, two arrows, two conversion factors. We already did the hard part. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. We take the previous unit and divide by that so that we can make it go away. Ugh. Come back. There we go. It always scares me when that happens. And then we want to divide by grams over here so that the grams go away. We make sure that all of our units are okay and that we didn't do any wishful unit canceling. I wish those units would cancel. They have to actually cancel. Well, this one might be the easiest because it's actually right over here. 0.788 is with gram. So I need to write it down here where the gram is. Once we get the units in place, we're not going to move them around. We're going to let the units tell us where to write the numbers. So 0.788, and then if I really want a number up there, I'll put a 1. Now this guy, we are going to create that conversion factor using our knowledge of metric prefixes. So on the information for the memorization quiz, milli is that lowercase m, and that stands for 10 to the what? Negative 3. You just have to memorize it. Why is my oldest son named James? Is there like some great profound reason behind that? No. The reason is we decided to call him James. Why does Millie mean 10 to the minus 3? Because we decided that it did. And we've all agreed that we're going to do that. There's nothing else behind it. You just have to memorize it. So Millie goes on the bottom. It's kind of like a nickname. We, I, I should have talked about Tommy instead of James, because we call James James. We don't call him anything else. But Thomas almost never gets called Thomas. We call him Tommy. But Tommy is another name for Thomas. Millie is another name for 10 to the minus third. But you don't call him Tommy Thomas or Thomas Tommy. You use one or the other, right? And Graham is a little bit like the last name. So this might be Tommy Kawagoa. And then up here, I'm going to write the other version of his name, Thomas Kawagoa. But I don't want Kawagoa on one side and Tommy Thomas Kawagoa on the other side. Does that make any sense? If that doesn't, just rewind in your head and, and erase it. Anyway, the unit goes on one side. The prefix goes on this side. What it means goes on the other. Always on the opposite. And then you'll never screw it up. Now, that might be confusing to enter into your calculator, so think of it as scientific notation. 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd. Okay, now, calculator time. We've got 35 times 1 EE minus 3 times 1 divided by 0.788 equals. Okay, and this is giving me a volume of 0 0.044416 blah 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 cubic centimeters. Does that make physical sense? A drop of nail polish remover. Should that volume be big or little? Should be little, and we came up with a small volume. So we don't have to be too worried that we screwed up big time. How many significant figures? Three. Two this time. 35 milligrams. But that's a whole number. It must be an exact number. No, it's a measurement. 35 mill milligrams is a measurement. So don't let uh, the whole numbers throw you off. Um, this does have three significant figures, the density. Densities are not exact, they're measured. And this is exact because it's a conversion in the metric system. But here we have two sig figs. So 
What digits are we going to keep? The zeros are not significant figures. Don't count them. You'll end up rounding to zero. We never round things to zero. We want to keep the four, first four and the second four. Those are the ones we're keeping. That, so I'm underlining the last digit that I'm keeping, the uncertain digit. So it's 0 0.044 cubic centimeters. Any questions? How many do we have left here? Just two. Looks like we're not going to get to chapter three at all. Hmm. Okay, let's do this one. A pure gold metal bar displaces 0 0.82 liters of water. What is its mass in kilograms? The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, read through the problem, pull out the numbers. 0 0.82 liters. Um, 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So we've got two numbers. Uh, starting point, not super obvious. Go to the end point. What's the question? What do we have to find? Mass in kilograms. So we're trying to get to kilograms. Now we have to go back and look at what are we starting with. Well, we've got liters and we've got grams per cubic centimeter. So we're going to start with this guy because he can't be used as a conversion factor. So 0 0.82 liters is where we're starting. And then how do we get from liters to kilograms? This is a conversion factor we're going to need. This has grams, that's not kilograms, and cubic centimeters, that's not liters. Ah. Well, hmm, grams, this has grams in it, so let's see if we can get that to one of these. What's it closest to? Kilograms, right? So we can go grams to kilograms. This density is relating grams and cubic centimeters. So if we had cubic centimeters, we could use this to get to grams, cubic centimeters. So we've used all the stuff they gave us. Liters to cubic centimeters. Hmm. Here's an often overlooked conversion factor, one milliliter is exactly equal to one cubic centimeter. Sometimes we use three lines in the equal sign. So that might be useful. Put milliliters in here. Can we go from liters to milliliters? Yeah, we can do that. Wow, four conversion factors. Not the only way to do this problem, but it's what I ended up with, so we'll just go for it. 0 0.82 liters, four conversion factors. This is the hard part, we did it. Liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters to grams to kilograms. Dora's going to have to chant that a whole bunch of times to remember it. But we don't have to remember it because we wrote it down on the paper. We just need to copy it down. So liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters to grams to kilograms. Previous unit goes in the denominator. Liters, milliliters, cubic centimeters, grams. This part, once you recognize the pattern, which I'm demonstrating over and over, so hopefully it's starting to, oh, that's what you're doing. Once you recognize the pattern, there's really not a lot of thinking involved here. Just follow the pattern. So gram cancels gram. Cubic centimeter cancels cubic centimeter. These guys cancel. Those guys cancel. All the units in their right places. Now we put in numbers. Well, this guy's written out for us. 
let's find the one that has grams and cubic centimeters in it. That's this guy right here. And we're going to put 19.3 with the grams. So 19.3 right there. And if you want, write a 1 down there. This is the one that often gets overlooked. A milliliter and a cubic centimeter are two names for the same thing. How about milliliter to liter? How do we do that? What does milli mean? 10 to the negative third. So millis on top, what it means goes on the other side, 10 to the minus third. Over here, what does kilo mean? 10 to the plus 3. So here I've got kilo on top. I put what it means on the bottom. 10 to the plus 3. Now you get out your calculator. So these are the buttons I'm pushing. 0.82 times 1 if you want. If it bothers you, put 1's in there. Divided by 1 EE negative 3 times 1 divided by 1 times 19.3 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 1 EE3 equals. This equals 15.826. What unit? Kilograms. The only one we didn't cross off. That's a decimal point because I don't do commas. Gold is very heavy. How many sig figs should that answer have? Well, how many does our starting number have? Two. That zero doesn't count. This has two, exact, exact, three sig figs, exact. So we're going to keep two. That's the ones place. So we can just round that off to be 16 kilograms. All right, I don't have time for the last example, but we'll call that the end of chapter two.